start looking at OSB systems and understanding them, OSB is just a generic term, just like radiant heat is. When you start looking at radiant heat, it can apply to in-floor heat, can be old-fashioned radiators, can be bars in uh, uh, baseboard heat as well as radiant heat. OSB is the same thing. Just because it's OSB doesn't mean it's a good product or a bad product. It primarily goes into is what the quality of product that you're going over. And this is one like, for example, here you see we have three different grades. We have a commodity grade, an average grade, and a high performance grade. As a flooring contractor and retailer, you want to know what your builders are using. Because I can guarantee you on a commodity grade, the only solution is, is to do a full spread adhesive and glue it down. And that's what we're getting more into that later. But it's important to know when you're at that of, the, of where that the grades are that you're laying on. Because most builders are very consistent in what products they're using. Here you can see a photograph where three of them were stacked up. We started looking at Orion strand board. Look at the difference of the edge swell on your commodity grade versus your high performance grade. So when you stack up three of them, you can see how much that that commodity grade has swollen. When that happens, we typically will try to give you an example like a kitchen sponge, okay? On a kitchen sponge, it's dried. You look at bars, when we actually will take and put in, a, for example, if I was to put like a six penny nail in that sponge, it'd have some pretty good resistance to it. When we actually hydrate that sponge, the sponge swelled. Now you look at, we haven't changed the amount of fiber in that sponge, all what we've done is we've changed the fiber density. So now you can put that same nail in there and it's going to come in and out real easy. And that's what we see when we have like a commodity grade after it's been wet. You can see that that thing is just expanded and it doesn't have any fastener retention at all. This one here is, it was done by one of the manufacturers. They were doing a soak test and what they did is they cut the panels into sections and then put them in a, in a one inch of red die in, in a tank. And as you can see, for example, how the difference in by manufacturer, look at on the plywood and how much it absorbed. As this gentleman mentioned before at Weyerhaeuser, they have different species they're using that also applies to your plywood. When we see a job like this one being framed in, you can see it got rained in on standing water. The thing when I was contracting, it really bothered me was is not knowing on how much moist, I know moisture will affect the material. When we were manufacturing our own product, we wanted to make sure that we had the importance of knowing on when we made our parquet, how much we can expect it to expand and contract and how long it would take to affect that. So we had some testing done at the University of Minnesota. With that, we found out, for example, like if we had a, a moisture content at seven and a half percent, we put it in a humidity chamber, chamber at 75% relative humidity that it took. The first week there was barely any change at all. So that's telling you acclimation right there. One week, and then it didn't change a thing. Then it was changed at 75% RH, a half a percent per week increase. So now when we did the decrease of doing 25%, putting the same material in a chamber at 25% and starting at 7.5%, the rate of change was not much different. The first week, you'd see little to no change. Then it was a half a percent per there. With that floor being saturated and looking at it in the summer, how long is that subfloor going to have to take to dry at normal construction 50 to 70% relative humidity? That panel there won't be ready to that won't be ready to install until probably November, December. It'd be faster to jerk the panel out and put it in. Those are the things that we try to educate you guys on of knowing on on when we have something like this, and you can see the water stains in there, it's really important to know that moisture does not release very rapidly. So therefore, in a case like this, one of the things a builder has to decide. We can push your production, don't tell me a week, a week ain't gonna do it. I could put in five dehumidifiers in there and you might get some movement. But we're gonna pull the crown and everything else and drywall right off the house here to get that subfloor dry. And that's where we usually tell the builder, we've got a choice to make, increase your production time or take the subfloor out.
every OSB manufacturer you see, they always advertise and brag about their SAM guarantee. What's their warranty on it? So when we look at it, you'll see, oh, we got a, this is their cell fact sheets on warranty and exclusions. And they'll have a no SAM guarantee. That would be ranging from like 100 days to 500 days. When you look at a product, and so you're looking on the internet to educate yourself on the different quality products, you're gonna see the commodity grades typically around 100 days. Then you get into your medium grade, you know, commodity, your average grade, and you're gonna see 200 or 300. You get your high performance, and they're up there four to 500 days. Of course, you know, there's a difference in elevation and price for that product too. But the important part is, is we also notice, and we have our commodity grade, you're also seeing that's where the one I passed around that you see where that's the one that's giving us the most problem. And that's why they only give it 100 days. I'll be honest with you, some of the commodity grade don't even make it 100 days and you still got Ed Swell. Here's one you can see it does have Ed Swell on it. I want you to look to see on this on the side and front. I'm guessing that's probably a half inch off the floor. What's the fix for that, guys? When we grind this off, I'm going to have how much subfloor left when I actually get it flat? About three eighths of an inch. That's how much you're going to have to take to get that thing down, not just round off the edge. Well, we see a lot of times, and I don't have them in this picture, it's a different seminar, where you'll see the reflection on a pre finished, and you'll see four foot, four foot, four foot. That's because floor sanders will go in there with like a 36 grit and just kind of round off the edges, they're still leaving the original hump right here. That's why we use just to take and set the nails and use a power plane and cross it for two different directions and it'll take off that thing in oh, about 30 seconds. But there isn't much material left. So when we start getting into structurally sound, if we take that commodity grade, cut it in half, and I end up weakening the sub floor by getting it ground down, we now have actually caused this fastener row is now going to be soft to the next floor joist. My concern of noise is going to be from this truss to that truss in that whole section. And that's repeated then on the next on the next floor truss. And that's where your squeaky floor comes in because that subfloor is moving that much because we removed this much material on our grinding. This is the stuff we need to educate our builders on because nobody can put it down there. So the only solution to that is full spread adhesive and try to help bond that OSB back to the hardwood to give it some strength.